Linda Halley's creation. This will be a part one of a two-part share, so be looking for part two coming soon. This will be a 12-piece um, share. This is the first six pieces, so enjoy, and here we go. We are going to do 12 different painting on glass projects. Here we're doing the countdown to 12 to show you the different ones we're going to do, as well as show you how to make candles the easy This is just a little reminder, a little intro page to remind you to don't forget to subscribe and hit your notify for you won't miss out on any future shapers. Let's do this. This glass here we picked up at the Dollar Tree. I believe they still sell them. They're $1.25 now. <laughs> but you can pick up different pieces of glass um, either at the Dollar Tree or out yard selling. Always clean your glass, make sure there's no fingerprints, no smudge prints on it. I clean my glass with alcohol. Now we're just going to take an acrylic paint pen and simply draw some white daisies onto it. You can do whatever colors you want. This is your um, creative piece. This is just giving you the techniques. Just a little reminder, don't forget to subscribe if you're watching on YouTube and hit that notify so you don't miss out on any future shares. With the white paint, I like to remind you as well when you're baking it off, you want to go about 25 degrees less. So you're going to go 325 for 25 um, minutes. How you do that, and this is only for adults, kids, adult supervision. <laughs> so with adult supervision, or if you're an adult, you can supervise yourself, <laughs> obviously. Um, 325 in a clean oven. Super important to make sure that oven's clean, otherwise you're going to bake in whatever is in your oven into your glass and you don't want that. So 325 for 25 minutes. What you're going to do is put it in an oven that's already cooled down. You don't heat it up. Do not preheat it. You're not making cookies. You're baking glass. <laughs> So 325, let the oven warm up with it in there. Put it on time bake if you do have time bake, that's perfect. Then you can walk away and forget about it. But if you don't, just set your timer, turn it off um, after 25 minutes and let it sit in there until it's totally cool. So what I do is I time bake it overnight and then I take it out in the morning, it's all cooled down and ready to go. Never touch hot glass, never take it out when it's hot, it can pop and crack on you. And that is not a good thing. One, you, you can get hurt really bad, and two, you've just lost all that work you did. So, 325, cool oven, time bake it, 25 minutes when you're using white paint. If you're using colored paints and you don't have to worry about burning the white, 350, 35 minutes. So I do 33, I do Three, two, five, two, five, or three, three, five, three, five. So now we're just going to add some accents on here. We're going to put our flower um, petals are done now. We're going to put leaves on. We've done the little white dot, dot, dots. And to know me is to know I kind of like to do that. It adds some depth to the piece that you're working on. It's that baby's breath um, effect. And now you're just going to work in your stems and just going to get fun and wonky and crazy with it. They don't have to be perfect. I didn't want to make this glass perfect because I wanted to show you with flaws and all. It's still a very pretty, elegant glass. So we're just going to paint this on. And remember, a little reminder, don't put your paint on too thick. Now during this um, share here, because there's 12 different video shares, pretty much going to talk you through this first one, give you the ideal and then I will pop in and out throughout the different shares um, that we're going to do because I'm giving you all the techniques on the first um, video share here. So now we're going to use some black to give it some um, depth and perception, outlining, some squiggles in there, just have fun with it. Make it your own design again, like I share on my other shares. Usually when you start doing these pieces, at first you're not super happy with it. You're like, oh my goodness, I could do better. And as you do these, you're, you are going to get better, and it's going to become 
more fun and relaxing for you. This is also a fun little project you can do with your kiddos. They can do their own little art thing on it. They don't have to be perfect. They just have to be fun. And you can bake that in and you have that memory forever. Or until you drop the glass and break it. <laughs> Hopefully that doesn't happen. Been there, done that. But it's fun to see your um, little art pieces kind of preserved as your kiddos grow up. And you use the glasses every day or on special occasions. But whatever you want to do. And here you're going to see how I take these glasses and we make them into candles. So when you're gifting them to someone, you can always make them into a candle. Once that candle's gone, they have a really pretty wine glass to use later on. These are also great um, gift ideas with a bottle of wine. You can tie them together and it's just a real fun way to give something to someone that's unique and different. So we're just filling in the flowers. We're adding more petals to them. Now that we're, we're taking the daisies and we're making more of a flower, um, just a white, pretty, petally flower. You'll see the little price tag on the bottom of that glass. Yeah, take those off before you start painting. <laughs> they come off with alcohol if you just spray them and let them soak a little bit. Pretty easy peasy. Dawn dish soap cleans your glasses and takes that off pretty well too. So here we're just going to go through, fill in the petals. There's your little subscribe reminder again. Hey, if you're watching this on Facebook, don't forget to like and follow. If you're interested in seeing more shares and stuff, when you do that, I can send you an invite on my Facebook page to join Hallie's Creations um, Creative Group. There you go, like and follow. Um, and that is a private group where if you're a crafter, if you're an artist, you just like looking at that kind of stuff, you want to learn from other artists and stuff, we're building that community up and you're welcome to join that as well. As long as we don't um, post anything appropriate, it is a safe place for you to share your art, um, positive vibes only. <laughs> And constructive criticism is okay, but you need to be positive. We need to um, support and uplift each other. The world's tough enough, man. We need to be there for each other. Put a little signature on there, and we're done. So we're just going to squiggle out the outlines here. Give it a little bit more personality. Make those flowers pop a little bit. I'm adding blue highlight. And you'll notice, too, that I'm using different pins. And I'm doing that to show you that you don't have to stick with just the acrylic pin. If you're using an oil-based pen that will um, bake into the glass as well, it'll just bake clearer. Um, the ink-based pen, same thing. This is going to give you more of a stained glass effect. So different pens will give you the different um, effects. Even a Sharpie will work. Um, when you bake it into the oven, it's going to set it. But isn't that just the cutest little thing? It's so easy to do, pretty fast. And you just set it aside, let it dry for two days. And then you're going to bake it up, 325, 25 um, minutes. Take it out cool, put it, um, take it out cool, put it in cool. And then let it sit again for a couple of days and it's set. Uh, you can put them in the dishwasher, but I would suggest don't do that. I hand wash my glass. It just preserves it. Do not soak them in the sink. That's, that's a big no-no. But you can throw them through the top dishwasher, but... It's not that hard to rinse out a glass with a little Dawn soap and <clears throat> be done. So I would suggest don't use the dishwasher, even though you can. So this is um, the first video share out of 12. And we'll be moving on to number two here pretty soon. Meanwhile, I'm going to go get a cup of coffee and I'll be back.
Now we're moving on to the soy wax candles. This is soy wax that I buy at Amazon and I melt it down and I pour it into the glasses that I've hand painted and turn them into candles. These are different um, pieces that I've done just showing you the different techniques and you can go from easy peasy to a little bit more complicated once you get better. The glasses that have the dot dot dots is um, super easy to do. So this is the soy flakes. They go a long ways. So we're just going to load this into the ceramic huge measuring cup type bowl and we're going to melt these down in the microwave. I fill this up about three quarters of the way full. because it will melt down. It... So now we're just going to put that into the microwave. And it's a clean microwave, note that. <laughs> For about four minutes and 25 seconds. And we're gonna walk away and let that melt. Meanwhile, we're going to make sure our glasses are nice and clean. Be careful when you're doing this that you don't pop the glass and break your hand. Honestly, I came really close to not doing these shares because I didn't want to be liable for anybody <laughs> if they broke their glass and cut their hand. But I think we're all capable and responsible enough to know that how, how to handle glass. And please just, if you're not, don't. <laughs> it's as simple as that. And this is an adult share. This is not a child share. If you're doing this with kiddos, then um, supervise them, please. Please, please, please. I have cut my knuckles many a times on glass, so please don't do that. So these wicks come with the soy wax and the little holders for them. And then I also use clothespins, and you're going to see how I do that in a moment here, too. As I shared before, I'm going to do a lot of talking at the front end of this video, of this 12 um, video share. But as the video progresses, a lot of these things you're going to see at that we've already talked through it and then we will up oh, a crap camera adjustment time and then we will go from there but on this one here you put your wicks in and yes some of them may be short and that's okay because I'm sure I'm going to show you how to get around that these little metal um, holders hold your wicks in place as you pour it in now notice here how the wax doesn't fully melted, and that's okay because that wax is super hot. And see how much is in there? That's gone from three quarters of the way full to about one fourth of the way full. So we're going to just stir that wax a little bit and get those little pieces, those little chunks to melt because you don't want chunky pieces. So let's just stir to finish it to melt. And I'm using a little plastic spoon. And then my little trick here is I use peppermint oil from the baking section. Um, I'm allergic big time <laughs> to um, all the oils and scents that they have out there. So I use the natural products, and this is peppermint, or you can use see on that little bottle there, that's clear vanilla. And I actually pick up my vanilla in Mexico. <laughs> it's super cheap there. When I go to my dentist, I just stop at the drugstore there, and I pick up my, my vanilla and lotions and stuff like that. So anyway, now we're going to gently and carefully pour this wax about three quarters of the way into the glass no more than that don't go all the way because we're going to put little soy melts on top and you're going to see that so halfway to three quarters of the way is more than enough i know some of you are going but won't the won't the heat crack the glass no, nah, I don't think so because you've already baked it at 325, so it's already, this glass has already withstood the heat. <laughs> so I think you're good there. Um, if it does, I'm sorry, but I don't think it will. I think you'll be fine. All the glass that I've used, I haven't had it crack or anything on me from putting the wax in. So we're just going to pour the wax into the glass, and then I'm going to show you how to make the little soy melts to go on top. It just finishes it off, and they're just so cute. So here's the little clothes pin method when you run out of those little metal, because they only give you two metal holders in that particular kit. And the uh, clothes pins work just fine as well. 
and there's a little trick to where if the mouth of the glass is too large for those items to hold the wick just use a couple of forks and I'll show you that cute little trick here in a minute to hold that in place leave your wicks long while you're making your candles you can trim them down later and there's your forks that's how I do the when the mouth is big on the daiquiri glasses they have a bigger mouth Again, we're going to make sure all those pieces are melted down. The, the wax is hot, so it's going to melt down in a moment here. This time I'm add, adding the vanilla. Same thing, I use a cup, the little cup from the NyQuil. <laughs> These are little measuring cups from, from uh, NyQuil, Dayquil. <laughs> and one cup full works just fine. So if you have kiddos and they have little medicine cups, you're, you're set. You have your you have your measuring cup. <laughs> if you don't, then it's about one sixteenth measurement. <laughs> I'm gonna pour that in, and we're gonna let it set. See the little soy melts on top as it spins around. This is what I'm gonna show you how to make those. I'm using different items to make candles into. For I can show you one, you can paint on pretty much any type of glass. And two, you can turn pretty much anything into a little candle. And they're, they're just so cute. So now we're going to take peppermint. We're going to crush them down. And this is going to just be accents into the peppermint candies. Into the um, peppermint candle. Sorry. We're going to sprinkle a little bit of that into the silicone. These silicone um, molds you can buy pretty much at any hobby store, baking store. These are the candy melt um, silicone molds and they work perfect for wax melts. I'm really big on improvising and using things that aren't what they're really made for. <laughs> but this works great. Um, we're going to take that extra wax that we have and we're going to make some cute little soy melts and use those to top off our candles. And I'll show you that little trick here too and then we'll also show you what they look like. Again, we're going to make sure that all the wax is melted down before pouring it. Just gently stir it and it will it will melt down within a, within a minute. Now, I've added some peppermint into the wax itself as well as into the forms. You can use the little food sprinkles or little glitter or, you know, use your imagination as far as what you want to add into your candle. Here I'm just doing the peppermint because I'm doing the peppermint scented. And that's pretty much it. You're just going to fill those forms up just to cover the form. You don't want it overflowing and, and dripping off and everything because when you pop them off, they're going to dry up and they're super easy peasy to do, but you want to let them sit overnight before you pop them out. So don't get ahead of yourself, otherwise they're going to fall apart. So 
Fill up your uh, silicone forms with your wax. Let them sit overnight. Then come back and then you're going to pop them out. And we're going to do that together as well. Now here I'm going to show you how I use my soldering gun because it has a very fine tip on it to poke a hole into that soy uh, melt here in a few moments too. And I'm also sprinkling while the wax is still a little um, pliable. It's not fully dry yet, so it's going to soak down into the top of that. It's just getting thick. Some peppermint into the actual, actual um, candle as well. Like I shared earlier, I have really bad allergies, so I had to learn how to be creative and figure these things out where I could enjoy candles and stuff too. Because what lady doesn't like a nice candle when you're taking a nice bubble bath? <laughs> so I, I like candles too. They just don't like me. But the soy wax candles are awesome. I can use them and they don't affect my allergies at all. So if you have allergies, you might want to try this. So now we are going to poke a hole into that soy wax. And you can do this with an ice pick as well. If you heat it up, just be super careful. This um, we're doing to have the wick come through. We're going to thread the wick through the soy milk. What's going to happen too when you poke that hose, it's going to seal up in the back, but you just pop it open and you're done. You'll see here what we do. So now our candy melts are ready to thread. Our wax has set. To see the little hole super easy put the wick through it bam you're done <laughs> and it just finishes off that candle looks like you put a little extra love into it Don't those look fun and finished off now? So on your um, molds here, you're just simply going to pop them out. The trick is letting them sit overnight. I usually make them up because I do have an art studio. Well, I did until we decided to move. I will when we move and get it set back up again. But right now, <laughs> right now I don't. Um, but you just pop them out, set them to the side, forget about them, and then come back and you have them for later. You can also use those soy melts if you um, make a little heart pop it off in your little um, wax melts that you use for your air fresheners and stuff. What I would suggest if you do that though is make it a little bit stronger. Um, but they work for wax melts as well. So now we are popping on to number three. Again, this is another um, glass painting, and this one is done on a daiquiri glass. Always clean your glass with alcohol, no smudges, and it's the same technique. You're going to use your acrylic paint pens. I love these paint pens. They work quite well. I get them off of Amazon. They are on my Amazon profile page, so if you want to see the different items I use, I do have um, a supply list on my Amazon profile page. Everything is Hallie's creation, so it's super easy to find. 
So on this one here, you're going. I'm going to pop over here for a second. You're going to use um, your pin and draw some cute hearts, different colors all over the pin. Getting back to the Am Amazon profile page, <laughs> uh, just go on there. Um, I have different lists created for the different shares I have as well as a generic list. So you can see the different items I use. No, I don't have any affiliated links at this time. That's not my driving force. My driving force is just to get out there, share what I know with others, and help you to um, learn to love to be creative and do your thing as well. So just jump on to um, Hallie's Creations. That's my personal profile page Like I turned into Hallie's Creations and check out the different playlists I have on there and it will show you the different supplies I use. There's um, playlists for glass painting and painting, so make sure you're using the one for glass painting, as well as different playlists. For example, um, even on my YouTube channel, there's the jewelry playlist, the wreath baking playlist, the holiday playlist, the DIY pl um, playlist that shows you how to make jewelry frames and your um, porch boards and different things that I've done DIY type style as well as glass painting, palette painting, um, brush stroke painting, oils, collage, acrylic, and um, the list goes on. I <laughs> have several different playlists. So check out those different playlists and um, this particular share that has the 12 videos in it this is on the glass painting playlist on my YouTube channel. So if you wanted just to watch one individual that I'm talking you through it, sometimes I will sit and talk as I do a live share. I will record that and share that with you. Or I do the voiceover like I'm doing this one here. So there's different ways that I do the videos. So just do your little hearts. Give them a little character, put a little highlights, so use the different colors. And you'll notice the candle in the back has beads on it in some spots. What we're going to do is bling um, this out with the flat back pearls and just make it really cute. So again, the directions for painting on, um, on the glass, how to bake it in, that's going to be in the descriptions as well as it is on my playlist. It's also on my Facebook, Hallie's Creations Albums for Directions, so you can find it there as well. I'll try to remember to put it in the descriptions. Let that sit for two days after you create it the way you want, and then bake it. You can embellish it, and then let it sit again, and then you're done. This is just showing you the soy wax um, form again that we just did on the candle making share. This is how this particular um, glass will look when it's all said and done. Just fun and easy peasy, just time consuming. Now on here, you don't. if you don't wanna bake your glass, you don't have to if you're not going to every day use it. If you're making it for a decoration piece, then just simply go for it. But I do suggest using the dishwasher Mod Podge to set those pearls as well as to seal it a little bit. Mod Podge goes a long way, so if you buy the small bottle, that's totally fine. You don't have to buy those big bottles. I buy the bigger bottles because I do a ton of projects and shares for you. But on every day, if I was just doing this, just to do this for myself, I would get the smaller bottles because it's a glue type product and it will dry up. You wanna make sure your lids are on there really good as well. So let's have a little fun with this and let's bling it out with the flat back pearls. You can use any type of embellishment you want. Just the key is make sure it's flat back. If it's not flat back, it's not going to stay on your glass. You can pick these up at Michael's, any hobby store. Even um, the Dollar Tree will have different flat back um, embellishments at times. So just have fun. And um, this is kind of time consuming, but it's also therapeutic. So you're saving a ton of money from therapy <laughs> by doing your art. Art is therapy. <laughs> you sit there, get into your own thoughts and just have fun with it.
bling it out to your style. You notice how I did the bottom all red. I thought that would be kind of fun and different. Make the white um, pearls pop. Use the colors you like. And this is one of the things I share on my painting shares when I'm teaching that. Don't get caught up with the the ordinary and what people think you should do. You're doing your art and your crafts to spark joy in your life. So use the colors that make you happy and don't get stuck into the fact that, well, it has to be this color or that color for it to be this way. You do you. You have fun with it. It's all a happy moment where you're just having fun. So here is another piece I did as we jump on to another share. <laughs> This is painting on flat glass with collage. So there's several different techniques you're going to learn in this. Now remember too that as you're watching this video of the collection of 12, each one of these videos are on my playlist on my YouTube channel under glass painting. So I just took a pin and I drew out some cute little pumpkins because I wanted something for fall. And I bought the frame where you buy one get one free at michael's that gave me the two pieces of glass for the price of one and i also got them on sale and they fit into the frame so when you're doing dimensional paintings you want to make sure before you even commit to the painting that those glass panes are going to fit into the frame you want it to go into really important not all frames are the same not all frames are crea created equal <laughs> So what I'm showing you here is to lay out your, pro your um, project to get a feel for it and then you um, commit to making it. So this is just the uh, matted Mod Podge. You can use the mat or you can use the frost. It doesn't matter um, because you'll see it, it doesn't matter. Just Mod Podge and don't I mean, if you want to use glue and make your own Mod Podge, you totally can, but here's my take on that, to be honest. If you're going to put in the work and put in the time, what's a few more dimes? <laughs> it's, it's really not worth it to cut corners on um, product when you're putting in your time. Mod Podge dries clear. It doesn't yellow. It doesn't crack. I can't say that for homemade Mod Podge. I've never actually made homemade Mod Podge because I just felt like I'd rather spend an extra dollar or two and be a job big or small do it right or not at all i my time's valuable and i when i make something i want it to be quality and i want it to last so now we're taking the glass and i'm showing you here how we cut out our little focal point here in the corners i'm showing the little plastic dots you can also create those little plastic dots with just a dab of glue from your glue gun we're going to clean the glass with alcohol. Again, we always, when you're working with glass, you want your glass clean and smudge proof. As you're going through making your project, you may smudge it out a little bit, just wipe it down. So we applied the gift wrapping paper that looks like wood to the back of the frame board. Now we're going to start layering this up again as we're using uh, touching the glass we're cleaning it up and we're going to lay out the collage pieces now on these collage pieces i went through and i thinned out pretty paper and cardstock and napkins i also thinned out some stickers that i picked up out there um, in, in the world of shopping <laughs> i think i picked up these stickers from the dollar tree and i'm also using the um the fake leaves to give that autumn effect but you have beautiful leaves in your area you can use those leaves as well you can use the real ones what I suggest if you're using real leaves is maybe put a layer of um, Mod Podge on them and let them dry and then commit to using them but here we're thinning out the paper and because I want that rustic old look I'm going super thin I'm taking it down to the, the final layer um, if you get crazy with this you could rub a hole through it so be mindful of that what this does by wetting the back of it is it um, activates the glue and loosens up the paper where you can thin it out and it will lay better and look nicer on your art project it's the little things that bring it together to make it look like it's done and really cool and professional looking 
So do the little extras, and you're not in a hurry anyway. Just have fun with it. Who cares if it takes 10 years to get it done? <laughs> I'm laughing, but I do have a picture that I've been working on for 10 years. <laughs> Actually, longer than that. Uh, the first oil painting I thought I would do was huge. And then it's like, whoa. <laughs> so I work on it when I'm feeling it. So here we go, just thinning this all out, laying it out the way we want, and just having fun with it. If you are going to use the fake leaves, pull the plastic pieces off of them for they'll lay flat. They usually have like a little plastic vine in them. Just, um, plastic vein? Vine? Yeah, plastic vein. Just pull, the, pull that plastic off. Put the second layer on there. Get your layout. Don't start committing. Don't start putting it together until you have it all the way you want. Now that we know how we want it, we're going to dump it and we're going to put it together. Set that second piece of glass to the side. Make sure that first piece is still clean. No smudges. And we're going to commit. Again, as I shared, we're going to use the Mod Podge and we're going to glue this down for it doesn't um, slide and move around on you later as the years go by. Put it in place. We are going to use Mod Podge to put all the pieces together. Mod Podge dries clear, so that's really cool. Now I do I do apologize because I jumped right to this right to the first layer and it's already highlighted. I I, I forgot to record that part, but what you. <laughs> Sorry. So you're going to lay that first piece down, get a feel for it, clean the glass up. And um, what I've done on the first piece of glass is I just went through and I highlighted it with my paint. You can use pretty much any kind of paint you want. I would not use oils because oils does not um, dry quickly and it would just be sitting there forever. So <laughs> just use um, acrylic or even... Um, you can use like a model paint, um, but an acrylic works quite nice. And you can use your acrylic pins on here that you've bought for your glass shares, or you can use your brush. Here we're just wetting, um, reactivating the paper to make it lay nice and flat, putting the Mod Podge on it. You don't want to go too crazy with the Mod Podge. You want to keep it you know, on the items that you're gluing down because you don't want that filmy look. On your glass and we're just going to go through and add our little collage pieces just gently mod podging them down We'll add a few more highlights, a little bit more Mod Podge. And what's really cool about this um, particular way of doing this is we're going to gold foil this in a little bit. Ooh, yeah, we are. We're going to use some gold foils. It's going to look really cool. And it's also going to um, just accent and accentuate those pieces, fill in the cracks. So what we, what we do here is I use the glue. Now you can use Mod Podge as well. You don't have to go out and buy this glue. Mod Podge works just fine with gold foiling as well, especially on something like this. But you're going to 
outline where you want the gold foil. Don't go thick and heavy because wherever that glue is, that's going to be foiled. So think of it in your mind as you're adding your little squiggles and your um, your different accents. That that whatever you lay down with the glue, that's going to turn into gold foil. So I'm adding the gold foil pieces here. And what I've learned too through um, trial and error is I like the gold foil sheet. So when you're buying them, you can buy them in the jars where they're little tiny pieces, or you can buy the sheets. I like the sheets. And again, that's on my Amazon profile page where um, under glass painting as well as painting, it shows you the different gold, gold foils I use. And you can use gold, silver, copper, rose gold. There's all kinds of different um, colors out there depending on what piece you're working on will depend on what color you want. I have to be honest though, I absolutely love foiling things. So you'll see where this is going to be covered pretty well. But that's the effect I'm going for as well. Remember too, as you're making an art piece, it's not going to look like how you want it to look as you're um, putting it together. And it may not even look like how you envisioned when you first started, when you finished. But as long as you do the process, you're having fun with it, I can guarantee you, you're going to like it. Don't worry about what other people think. Don't go seeking other people's opinion. It's all about if you like it, you're having fun with it. That's what it's all about. The only time you have to worry about somebody else's opinion is if you're doing it on a commission piece. That's one reason why I don't do a lot of pre-commission pieces because I don't like the stress of trying to please somebody else. I like to get in there. I like to have fun with it. If somebody wants to buy it after it's all said and done, yay. But if not, that's fine too. Um, I've never had a problem selling or giving away or gifting or anything. I don't sell a lot of my pieces because I just don't. That's not who I am, but I do sell some. But um, for the most part, I just love making neat stuff and showing you how to make it, and that's my jam. But I do, like I share, I do sell things periodically because you can't keep everything you make when you make a lot. It just gets crazy and cluttery. I try to keep the first piece of everything I make. They'll just... I have it to show later. So just add your gold um, foil lines wherever you want them to go. Add that glue there. Lay your gold foil down. At this point, don't worry about trying to save um, your gold foil. Just get it in there because what's going to happen is when you brush this off, you're going to have the pieces that are not going to stick to the glass and you can use those again in another project. So you're not going to lose any material. So just gently tap, tap, tap. Don't rub. Don't push. Just gently tap, tap, tap with a brush. And let this dry overnight or at least a good hour before you brush it off. An hour is fine if you want to keep at it. But um, I usually let things dry overnight. Having a studio, <laughs> when I have one again, um, but having a studio is great because I can just leave it and walk away and then come back to it. Versus leaving it on your dining room table, <laughs> like a lot of us do when we first start out. So just gently tap, tap, tap. <laughs> Yelling at your kids not to touch it. Don't touch it, it's drying. And just have fun with it. So just go through, go foil it all the different places you want, and then I'm going to come back and we're going to show you how to brush that off.
So now you'll see here where I'm telling you to gently brush off the gold foils. Don't rub too hard. So important. Just get a nice coarse brush that you can use and just start brushing that off. You can go out and you can buy all these extra tools for all this stuff that the manufacturer tells you you need. Or you can be a rebel like me and look at it and go, well, I have that. <laughs> or I can use that. I actually use a big fluffy makeup brush to do the final brush off. And I picked that up at the Dollar Tree um, in the makeup department. And it brushes it off and makes it all nice and clean. And it only cost me a dollar. <laughs> And it does the same thing. Um, and then to brush off the gold foils, I just use the uh, um, paintbrushes that I have already. So I don't go out and buy special brushes for gold foiling. Just a little reminder to subscribe. Hit that notify if you like what you're seeing. For you don't miss out on any future shares. Now, see here what I'm doing is I'm using a smaller, more detailed, fine, um, harder brush head to really rub that, um, not rub, but to brush off. Because, like I said, don't rub. And you just do that to get the desired look that you want. And it looks like a hot mess right now, but it will all come together. Just gently brush, brush, brush. This is where I'm saying earlier on that it's important to only put the glue where you want those foils to stay. So wherever that glue is, is where those foils are going to be now. And you just work at it and brush it to your liking. On here, I've taken the glass down to just the single pane for I can really work on it and set everything else aside. See all those little gold flakes off to the side there? Those I will gather up and put them in my little gold flaking drawer. I have um, a little container for those, and I will use those on a future project. So nothing's wasted. And it's okay to walk away while you're doing it and to come back. Walk away! <laughs> because... Um, it does take a little time to do this and you can get a little frustrated. So just relax, have fun, walk away, come back. It's not going to go anywhere. And just work it until it's the effect you want. Now we're going to lay the second piece of glass on here and we're going to um, do some more highlighting and some more accents. What we've done you clean the glass, you have two panes, you've bought two frames, that way the glass will fit into the frame. Make sure two pieces of glass will fit into the frame, so you want a little deeper frame. 
to make sure it will accommodate the two pieces of glass and the back panel. You're going to take the back panel, you are going to cover it with whatever type of background you want on it, whether it's wrapping paper, fabric, or you're just going to paint it. Whatever you want to do on that, you can actually paint the background, the back panel if you want. And then we're going to add the glass, paint the highlights onto the glass, paint on the glass as much as you want. Add the collage pieces to it to bring it all together. Then we're going to do the gold foiling on it. Then we're going to put the second piece of glass on there. That's more of a protective to cover the collaging and everything on the first piece of glass. And then you're going to paint on the second piece of glass because you can. And it's going to add more depth and perception on there and, and give you more of that 3D effect. And let it dry and then you're going to frame it. Now on this particular piece I made the frame to match um, the art piece that I worked on so it's a collage frame as well and that frame is on my playlist to show you how to do it. It's on my DIY playlist as well as with this painting on glass playlist. So you'll see here how the frame matches and falls into place and, and I'm also showing you here how you can use model paint, you can use glass paint the acrylic paint, whatever type of paint, the effect that you want to get for the project. As I've always shared, use the colors you like, let them spark joy, and just have fun with it. Remember when you're cleaning this in the years that you got to be gentle with it. If you are using an acrylic, you don't want to be rubbing on it because you will mess up your paint job on the top layer. So just treat it like a, you do any other painting. And there you go. Bam! Now we're going to add um, on there Grateful, and that's just a little sticker I picked up at the Dollar Tree, and it's pretty much done. Yeah. So I hope you had fun with that, and if you want to see how to make, like I shared earlier, this frame, it's just um, collaging with Mod Podge. It's pretty easy peasy, and there you go. So we're going to go on to the next share here. Um, each chair is a little different because I wanted to give you a variety so it's a little different technique so on this one here it's paint on glass again but we're also going to be using a napkin <laughs> so this is really kind of cool so I've already showed you on the other video how to thin out your paper so on the napkins what you're going to do is you're going to peel that down to the final layer for you only have one layer and then you're going to cut it out and apply it to a clean glass Gently tap that onto the glass. And what I do when I'm working with Mod Podge and I'm doing projects like this is I have a little bit of water next to me for I can get my fingers wet and make it more pliable. So on this one here, we are using the dishwasher Mod Podge because we are not going to bake this glass. You will also notice on this that your paper napkin will have crinkles in it and wrinkles and that's okay because it's going to add character and as you do the gold foiling on it and the highlighting it's just going to make it pop so don't worry about it if you accidentally tear it a little bit or if it's got a little bit of wrinkle gently use the sponge applicator here to tap 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 and to make that adhere and um, make it stick real well after it's dried um, for at least overnight let that Mod Podge dry you're going to come back and you're going to do your highlights this napkin I actually was quite happy with it it went on almost clear so you had the design um, and then I could just go through and accent the different parts of it also I wanted to show you here too how you can be a little sloppy and have a little fun with it it doesn't have to be perfect if you're into making things super perfect and all that that's yay that's I do that as well but I also want to show you that it doesn't have to be perfect you just put your lines in there this particular brush I absolutely love I hate it it's a love-hate relationship <laughs> I, I hated it at first because it is hard to work with but if you're using it for what it's used for which is drawing lines and outlining it's perfect so play with it if you get yourself a long um, brush like that and you'll get some really cool effects out of it. So we're just going to do our highlights on it, let it dry at least overnight, give it a good 24 hours before you put your gold foiling on it.
The stylus I'm using here I picked up at the Dollar Tree and it's great. This stylus I use for when I'm doing um, hot glue projects for I don't burn my fingers as well as my painting. It's perfect for putting those little accent dots on there. And if you um, load it up and then go three to four out, you're going to get that really cool um, large to smaller effect. So, yeah, always um, add a little pop to it. And it has two different ends to it. As you saw how I just flipped it there, one ball ends a little bit larger than the other one. So depending if you want the smaller dots or the bigger dots, it gives you that option. And as I shared, I picked it up at the Dollar Tree for a dollar. So now we are going to um, put your gold, um, after it's dried overnight at least, at least walk away. <laughs> Come back to it tomorrow, let it dry. We're going to put the um, gold on here. And this one here, actually I, I did copper. I wanted to show you the different um, sheets that you can get. And see how it just easily lays on that? Just wrap it. You're going to let it dry for at least an hour before you brush it off. This piece here I made for a friend of mine. Hi Kim, I hope you're enjoying your bottle and your little glass. This is actually, um, you know how like when you have water by your bed at night? That's what this is for. You can um, put water in the little um, jug there, the little bottle, and then you have your glass for your nighttime water. Or if you want to put it in your bathroom and have it for like your mouthwash or, you know, whatever whatever floats your boat you can put alcohol in there too if you want i'm not a big drinker so yeah i use it for water but this was made for my friend um so we're doing mod podge over that and it's the dishwasher mod podge let it dry for a good month before you use it because it has to cure and then you're done the bottle art if you're going ooh, that bottle's cool i do have bottle art on my um, youtube playlist and you'll see how to make all kinds of different decorative bottles so Check that out if you like that bottle and you want to see different styles. I have all kinds of different styles on there. But that's it. Done. On to the next one. <laughs> this is pretty much the same effect. It's painting on glass doing the um, gold foils with the napkin. Always like I share, clean your glass. <laughs> You're going to thin the napkin out just like you did on the other share. And I'm going to show you how to do that. It's real simple. You can use your fingers and just get them wet, or you can just spray it with a little spray bottle. Usually, if you just lick your fingers and get it wet, it comes off easier, but I thought that would be kind of gross to do on a video share. So I did it the lady way, and I just got it wet. <laughs> Lay it out, cut out your pattern, and get crack a lacking. <laughs> So on these shares here, I am using the dishwasher Mod Podge. We're not baking the glass because we're not painting on it and then baking it in. We're actually using the decoupage technique. So if you're not going to um, get the glass wet ever again, you can use the regular Mod Podge. But if you're going to use it, you need to use the dishwasher Mod Podge. Here's why. If you get regular Mod Podge wet, it will reactivate it and it's just not going to work. <laughs> So get the dishwasher Mod Podge. Cover your glass with it, put your pattern on it, and then you're going to secure it. And you're going to have the same thing again. It's going to get a little wrinkly and um, crinkly, but you saw how cool that looked on the other one. You don't have to cover your whole glass. Just cover some, you know, focal points. And then you're going to um, outline it with your paint and your gold foils.
Again, you're seeing the technique where we use the sponge and we're just dabbing it. By dabbing it, it gives it that frosty effect versus the clear, spongy, um, you know, streaky effect. So that's like how I do the dab, dab, dab. So now we're going to old, um, add the gold flakes to it. Again, as I shared before, you can buy the gold in the jar I'm showing you here. This is one of my earlier pieces, or you can use the sheets. I absolutely love, just, I've tried both and I love the sheets. They turn into those little flakes anyway when you, when you brush them off. <laughs> so um, you don't have to buy it in a jar like this. Just get, just get a, the gold sheets. And again, they're on my Amazon um, supply list under Hallie's Creation, so you can go on there and check that out. No affiliated links or anything. Just type in Hallie's Creations and you should be able to find me. Or just click the, the link, because I do have the link in the descriptions in, on my YouTube channel. And it's, it takes you right to it. Just a reminder, if you do like what you're seeing and you're enjoying this, um, don't forget to subscribe and hit your notify. If you're watching this on Facebook, don't forget to like and follow. Um, again, I do have a Hallie's Creations creative page as well as Hallie's Creations um, group. So if you are interested in being part of the Hallie's Creations group where we get on there and we share the different things we do, I post everything I do first there. Um, I will send you a little invitation. You just accept it and you're good to go. There's another bottle, different style. These are really fun during the holidays when you go into your um, host or hostess home and you take them a bottle of wine and you take it a little different. They just absolutely love these. This again is done with the dishwasher Mod Podge. So you do have to let it sit for a good month. It says 25 days. So let's just say a month um, before you can actually use them. It has to cure but then you're good to go. Another little thing I learned is don't put your wine 
into the refrigerator because it will reactivate the Mod Podge if you're using regular Mod Podge. If you're using the dishwasher Mod Podge, even on your bottle, then you're going to be good to go. We're going to accent it now with a little white acrylic paint and just give it a little bit of pop. 